Well, thank you guys for being here. Uh, today we have decided to show you what are the new things we are making, not only in terms of making new brands, is improving the Hoya de Nicaragua uh, image, the Hoya de Nicaragua factory, environment, everything that we have made in order to be a better company uh, today. Than we, are we are in this process. I don't know if you are aware, maybe you, you talked about this before, that Juan Martinez, Dr. Alejandro Martinez's son, has been named the president of the company, Hoya de Nicaragua, recently. So this is a very important move. Uh, the new generation. Yeah, the new generation taking the, the, the will of the company. So in this uh, process, uh, a lot of changes have been made. We have included new uh, blood to the company, like Carlos or Alberto. Carlos is very deep involved in everything with the social media. So he is uh, the image of Hoya Nicaragua. He controls the image of Hoya Nicaragua and is the content with you or some of the things you normally do. And uh, we want to start with a brief uh, presentation, a timeline of Hoya uh, Nicaragua that we will show you right now and then we will go and Carlos will explain a little bit of what this change is uh, now uh, what are the uh, moves we're making so uh, we will start with a brief uh, timeline for you to refresh the history of Hoya and what who we are in this industry so let's start the history of Moya de Nicaragua uh, goes in hand with the evolution of our country's history. As you know, we have been having a very convulsive, let's say, history, but at the same time, very exciting. <coughs> and we want to pair the history of the industry and the history of Nicaragua uh, right now, especially Moya de Nicaragua history. Uh, in the decade of 30s, uh, I mentioned you that we have been doing <coughs> research, especially in the National Library of Nicaragua, Carlos especially, have been there, taking information, real information, not things that have been talked, but real written information. We found some uh, data about, uh, for instance, this uh, uh, manual or method of uh, tobacco uh, cultivation. cultivation, yes, in uh, Nicaragua from the 30s. And we, at the same time, discovered the law of control of tobacco growing in Nicaragua in the 30s, previously to the arrival of the Cuban uh, experts that came in the 60s. So the tobacco was grown in Nicaragua, not only Burley or Virginia, but also black tobacco alongside with the uh, native Chilcagre tobacco that we have talked about before. Yeah, so there is uh, information about the beginning of the industry at the beginning of the 20th century here in Nicaragua. Then we go to the 60s, the period when the manufacturing industry starts. And this is already influenced by the arrival of especially Cubans that came here to Nicaragua. They did not came here by chance. They came before the government of Nicaragua established a program, a financing program, together with the World Bank, in order to promote some agro-industries. And they considered, especially the government of Nicaragua, to, to, to have an opportunity with the black tobacco. With the black tobacco, and that's why they put money and asked the money to the World Bank to make this pilot program, the pilot program of Havana seed tobacco in Central America, in Nicaragua. And that's when the Somoza government brought here the first uh, specialist, Jacinto Argudin, from Cuba, who brought the seed to Cuba and started to grow tobacco. 
uh, Nicaraguans first started to grow tobacco that they would sell or sell through the government of Nicaragua to companies in Tampa, Florida. But the bus started immediately. And the people that was in that business, especially were Cubans, and those that left the island after the revolution in Cuba in 1959. So soon, when they started to see the possibility of growing tobacco in Nicaragua, many families came. And you know all the famous family names that came to Nicaragua, Plasencia's families, Perez families, Torano's families, etc., 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 Oliva's family. So everyone was coming here because they knew the industry and they saw an opportunity here. But this, this was not by chance. It was especially because of this financial program that existed here. So we started to grow tobacco and we started to sell this tobacco to Tampa, especially, to Tampa uh, cigar manufacturing companies. Then come the, 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 the next moment is the manufacturing uh, uh, industry, how it is developing in Nicaragua. Sooner or later, it would happen because the business develops. So the first step was selling the leaf. But then a couple of guys decided, why not make cigars in Nicaragua? It's an opportunity. Those guys were Juan Francisco Bermejo and Simon Camacho. The two of them decided to open the cigar factory here in Esteli. They decided Esteli because the fields were near. Uh, Esteli was close to the Pan American Highway, so there was an easy way to ship the cigars to the airport in Managua and to make the export to the United States. That's the reason why Esteli is the uh, location uh, designed uh, for them to uh, introduce or to make the cigar industry here. So, Bermejo and Camacho decided to build the first Nicaraguan cigar factory. This is what they call Nicaragua Cigars Company. That is actually Coya in Nicaragua. Immediately they developed the brand because they needed the brand. And the brand they uh, developed was Coya de Nicaragua. There are Several, uh, <laughs> several possibilities about the, the designation of the name. Some people say maybe it comes from Hoyo de Monterrey, and they decided to make something similar in Hoya de Nicaragua. But Hoya means jewel in Spanish. And there is a very famous, the very first tobacco farm here in Nicaragua that belongs to Olivas now is La Hoya. La Hoya farm. So, other people there. say there is possibility the Hoya de Nicaragua name comes from in, 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 in honor to this finca, La Hoya. So, they created La Hoya de Nicaragua as its first cigar brand, and they also developed a couple of brands more like Rosalones, uh, 50 Club, Jericho, and several others. But Hoya was the most important. Brand. Then comes the time of the early 70s and Hoya arrives to the international markets, especially to the United States. Um, if you see, this is an extract of a, a February 70th uh, newspaper from Nicaragua, Novedades, explaining about the first export of Nicaraguan cigars to the United States. So. All these documents have been compiled uh, by us, trying to really give form to the history of the tobacco industry in Nicaragua. So in the 70s, we started to sell Hoya to the United States, and the cigar started to be very, very uh, well known and uh, very well accepted, especially among those uh, smokers that uh, uh, expected some character in the cigars. They discovered a the new, uh, nice product in the Nicaraguan cigars, especially Hoya. And uh, this addressed the attention of the dictator of Nicaragua, Somoza, Anastasio Somoza, who uh, decided to enter the business. 
So Mosa was a cigar uh, smoker. Uh, he used to smoke cigars all the time. And uh, when he first died, I believe you have met Dr. Martinez and have talked about this chance when uh, Somoza went to the White House and uh, found in a meeting with Nixon that uh, the cigar that was given in diplomatic uh, uh, events was uh, Hoya Nicaragua. It was the official was cigar of the White House. And Nixon told him, this is the official cigar we're giving here. So this immediately uh, addressed his attention and when he came back to Nicaragua, he got in touch with the company and mentioned, okay, this is the official cigar of Nicaragua, I want to be part of it. And become a member of the uh, board and uh, owner, partial owner of this company together with the Cuban, Romero and Camacho. Uh, this gave an impulse, uh, but uh, at the end, Camacho and Romero couldn't help the pressure of being working with such personality and leave the country and uh, the company uh, stayed in the in the hands of Anastasio Somoza and uh, he brought a couple of uh, uh, other Cuban people to rule to run, run the factory here so uh, in this moment Hoya was developing very very fast and hard in the United States so that uh, there are uh, figures by uh, uh, 1976, we were selling 9 million cigars per year. So that was a huge amount of cigars being made in that moment. Uh, and uh, that's when they decided to make uh, a new cigar factory. That was the time of growing, and they decided to make this building, the building where we are right now. This was the very first uh, manufacturing, cigar manufacturing company in Nicaragua because uh, before that time there were always uh, small places where we made the cigars but when they got to those million figures they decided okay let's do a building and this was one of the very first two-story buildings in the, in the town yeah. and uh, they developed this building to make uh, at least 10 million cigars per year uh, that was a very good moment, but uh, at the same time, this was the starting of uh, the revolution in Nicaragua. As you know, uh, Somoza's family ruled the country for over 40 years, and this was a very uh, difficult political and social uh, uh, situation here. And the people of Nicaragua couldn't help the pressure of the dictatorship of Somoza and uh, the revolution, Sandinista revolution, that was leader by the Sandinistas, took place at the end of the 70s, and Somoza had to leave, had to leave the country. He left the country, and a new government, a uh, socialist government, was established here in Nicaragua in 1979. Uh, during that moment, the uh, worst period of the the insurrection that happened in Nicaragua in Somoza happened to be most in the northern part, especially here in Estelí. And the company was uh, uh, fired, uh, was uh, burned. Yeah, uh, because here there was the uh, Somoza guard inside the factory, and the guerrillas had to uh, burn the factory to, to get this uh, back. So, after this period of uh, war, uh, a new moment came here, the reconstruction, they had to work. This is exactly the very first year, this picture is from 1980, when uh, the company was reconstructed and we started production again of cigars in 1980. Uh, naturally, the factory had a lot of tobacco in inventory, they could start to make cigars again. They still the business with the United States was open, no problem, so we continue selling cigars to the United States and opening at the same time new opportunities in Europe or uh, in uh, other parts of the world. So we started to sell, keep the amount of cigars we were making at the end of the 70s, we continue making cigars. Um, this is a catalog, an old catalog from Lou Rodman from the 80s. 
Yeah, and uh, uh, this was very good until 1984. In 1984, uh, the embargo was placed in Nicaragua. So, uh, as it happened to Cuba, now uh, the Reagan administration decided to place an embargo on all Nicaraguan products, and it was impossible for us to continue selling the cigars in, in the United States. That's when the moment of the uh, other products, like the box you have seen here, took place because the owners of the uh, brand in the United States decided to continue selling cigars made in another place that was not Nicaragua. And uh, because of the political situation and the social situation, we had to find new alternatives uh, besides the United States. That's how the business started to increase in Europe, selling cigars to Germany, France, Spain, etc. And that's how Polya spread uh, to other markets because of the uh, difficulties to sell our cigars in the United States. <coughs> Then in the decade of the 90s, uh, the Sandinista revolution uh, came to an end. It lasted 10 years. Uh, the difficult situation of civil war in Nicaragua aimed to that moment when uh, the election happens to be here and the people decided uh, not to continue with the Sandinista government and a new era of peace uh, came here. It was a very difficult moment because we had about six or seven years of continuous civil war in the 80s. So the 90s was, was a very difficult moment in terms of economic recovery, but at least we had peace. And Polya continued producing cigar as much as possible. The only difficult moment was that during the 80s, the company was nationalized because it belonged to Somoza. All property that property that, that were nationalized in the 80s should be given in return to their original uh, owner, but not those that belonged to Somoza by law. So this company became a group, a, a big group of companies that was given to control to the government of Nicaragua to put them in the private uh, economy again. So in 1994. A new era starts in Boya, Nicaragua, and this company was acquired by Tabacos Puros de Nicaragua, uh, a group of investors headed by Dr. Alejandro Martinez Cuenca, who bought the company and uh, started a new moment uh, here. The coincidence was that uh, in that moment, the cigar boom started in the world. It was a very uh, special situation in which uh, uh, th th there was a rebirth of the uh, cigars all over the world. And the demand was incredible. You could not imagine how much demand we could receive here, customers and customers and customers asking for more and more and more cigars, making what kind of cigar you want. This is not good because you know this is not forever, but this some way helped a very, um, a very uh, armed uh, uh, industry to recover, because uh, in Nicaragua there were a lot of difficulties and the economy especially was in a very bad situation. So this boom allowed a lot of different uh, foreign investors to come here and start to produce cigars. That's how, in the term of three years, there were 20 different cigar companies here working already, from one to 20 in three years. And a lot of new factors started to uh, make cigars here in Nicaragua. You know, all famous brands. Of course, uh, there is uh, difficulties after the boom, but uh, those that manage to continue making good cigars continue until now. In 1998, this is a very crucial moment in our uh, history because, uh, as you know, uh, the brand Boya Nicaragua, despite it belonged 
to uh, Tabacos Puros de Nicaragua and Juan Alejandro Martinez Fuente here in Nicaragua, uh, the American company that imported the cigars in the United States registered the trademark in the United States. So it belonged to another company. And in 1998, we purchased it back. So the brand name and the trademark belonged since 1998 to Hoya Nicaragua. It was a very difficult moment, and uh, coincidence, uh, uh, the coincidence was that it was the day, the, the, the year of the Hurricane Mitch in Nicaragua. I don't know if you remember, in the south of Honduras and northern of Nicaragua, the destruction that caused that hurricane here was huge, and almost destroyed all tobacco plantations there. This was a moment when the industry removed those weak companies that were uh, making cigar giving good and only the strong one that suffered a lot as well with the hurricane survived. So every everyone that survived the hurricane survived in the industry and continued working. Until uh, now. In 201 there is a very special moment for us and is the creation of the Antonio 1970 brand. Antonio 1970 was uh, the point of uh, inflection, I don't know if that's the right word, for Boya de Nicaragua. We created a cigar that came into the market as something totally new, a real full body cigar that uh, was a success and until now we're very happy because this is uh, a brand that uh, creates a trend. There is uh, a group of lovers of that kind of cigar, and since uh, 201, we continue making these cigars and selling these cigars in the United States and around the world. Then in 204, we got uh, we celebrated 10 years of uh, belonging to Tabacos Puros de Nicaragua. We made the celebration and got uh, uh, we're in the group of the 25 top 25 cigars of the year. Uh, and then in 2008, we made the alliance with Drew Estate. When the very first <coughs> and traditional company uh, met this innovative group uh, leader by uh, Jonathan Drew, and uh, we discovered how many common things we have together and decided to work together since to a with a very successful uh, relationship and partnership until now. And well, uh, the new uh, time of uh, innovation started also in Hoya de Nicaragua, introducing new lines, new products, improving the image of uh, Dr. Alejandro Martinez, and until now when also uh, new specialists and new people uh, like Jose came to the company and uh, helped us to build a firm and solid group, a firm and solid company uh, that uh, is proud of being one of the uh, original and best representative of the Nicaragua cigar industry. So, this is a brief uh, timeline of history of the company. <coughs>